So in this uh, clip we're going to have a look at a game between two powerhouses, one from China, the other one from India, Li Chao versus Fidit from the tournament China versus the World. Uh, I think it was a rapid game, but it doesn't matter for the position we're going to talk about, uh, because I would like to discuss with you the topic of intermediate moves. Intermediate moves have the power of changing the course of the game, and that's very nicely shown in um, in this example. An intermediate move means basically that uh, you could automatically recapture, but you could also refrain from doing that by finding a smarter way to pose new problems to the opponent. Let's have a look at the position. It looks like a very normal type of position where black is playing with an isolated pawn, but as compensation he has, let's say, free development. He's about to bring his bishop out from c8, I guess to something like g4. He could centralize the rooks, open files. A little bit more space, but the pawn on d5 could potentially become a weakness. That's what the main theory says about playing with an isolated pawn. Fidet decided to play this move d4, trying to solve all the problems, open the position, and, well, if the d-pawn versus the e-pawn uh, would be traded, well, black would probably have a comfortable game, depending on the activity of the pieces. But since um, white hasn't castled yet, it actually made, makes quite some sense to open the position. And, well, I think that after, let's say, e takes d4, knight takes d4, well, everything looks uh, quite comfortable for black. I'm, I, I w actually would prefer to be black here, because bishop will come to g4. Black is just a little bit... Uh, better developed here. Uh, White will probably castle kingside and still good chances to uh, to survive. But nevertheless, the opening hasn't been a success for White. However, I think that White saw this move d4 coming and he anticipated it and was actually ready to play this intermediate move. Not capturing on d4, but eliminating this knight on c6, which is an important piece supporting the uh, central break. So, white took on c6, which could be a smart decision. But let's say, if you recapture on, on c6, well, now it's much easier for, uh, for white to, to take. He doesn't have to worry about knight takes d4. Pawn on c6 can later become a weakness. So... That was basically White's idea. However, if you can make intermediate moves, you also should always uh, reckon with the possibilities for the opponent. And that's what's happening here. Black doesn't recapture on c6, but he takes on c3. And this is a smart move, because, well, if White would recapture, then you would like to take on c6, and then you are a piece up. Well, that's not the end of the line, because you always need to make your uh, thoughts more concrete. You cannot say, if he recaptures, then I do this. No, you need to look specifically at what's happening here. And there are a couple of options. Well, if you take with the b-pawn, this is not the best move, then you can simply take on c6 and black remains a piece up. So take with the b-pawn is not a serious move. If you take with the rook... The problem is, if I take on c6, then my bishop is still hanging with rook takes c5. And white is a not a piece up, but he's a pawn up, and, he, well, he didn't lose material. That's the point. But here we are looking for intermediate moves. How can we make intermediate move? Basically to solve the piece which is under threat, or with a check. But here there is no comfortable check, but there is a very nice intermediate move with bishop b4 counter-attacking uh, the piece which has been attacking your own piece. So bishop b4, um, now the rook on c3 as well as the bishop on c6 are hanging. After the bishop retreats, you take on c3. Well, probably white should have played this. Um, and he remains uh, an exchange down, but well, he has the bishop pair and one pawn, so sort of playable position, but nevertheless, this is better for black. In the game, White decided to take with the bishop. This looks as if not much is going on, but it's a little bit tricky because let's say 
you automatically recapture. I will trade off queens on d8. And now we see this battery with the rook on the bishop. Only the bishop on c3 is uh, still blockading the c-file. But fortunately for white, there is bishop takes f6, g takes f6, rook takes c5, and white is better. Pawn up, good structure, everything is fine. So b takes c6 is not good. But of course it's black's turn, and black will take first on d1. Now the problem is that, well, you would like to not to give up the right to castle. But if you take with the rook, there is no longer this pressure on the c-file. Black captures on c6, and there is no good discovery attack with the bishop, because there is no threat against bishop on c5. So, in order to maintain the threat on the c-file, king takes d1 is like only move. And this is interesting, and I guess that Li Chao, playing with the white pieces, had been anticipating all this, um, assuming that uh, he would be able to save his bishop, because after b takes c6, he can still take on f6, and if you recapture, then I take on c5. And this is an interesting moment, because many people would have stopped the calculation, believing that there is no good way to solve the problem of the bishop. This is one way to solve the intermediate problems, um, to move the bishop away with a counter check, for example. This is not possible. So the other way to solve the problem is to prevent the opponent having a good discovery attack. And the white's only good discovery attack is based on this move bishop takes f6 winning, uh, sorry, not winning the knight, but taking the knight. Um, and this is an issue. So, black has this brilliant move knight to g4. So this is removing the knight from f6, threatening to take on f2. So white doesn't have time to remove the bishop. So, if you protect with rook f1, then I will take on c6. And as I said, there's no good discovery attack with uh, with the bishop, because you would like to attack something. You are, at the moment, a piece down. You cannot uh, regain the material. If you take on g7, well, it doesn't make any sense, because you take, rook takes c5, and you uh, remain a piece down. So that's, that move, rook f1, is simply too slow. Then you would think, well, I can just move... Uh, somewhere else with uh, with the king. For example, I could play this move uh, king e2, but after king e2, there's b takes c6, and black is just a piece up. Once again, there is no good discovery on, uh, on the bishop on c5. Is this the end of the line? No, we are trying to keep the threats alive, pose and counter threats. That's the, the, the trick of intermediate moves. Um, the bishop on c1, on c3, is not doing too much. And why play this move, bishop to e1? Very tricky move. Once again, if you take on c6, I can take on c5 the bishop. So that's a bit of a problem. Um, can we do something about the bishop? No. If the bishop moves from c5, then the bishop from uh, c6 will move as well. And the problem is, well, white is guarding this pawn on f2 very well, so no tactical shots here. But we continue. We have intermediate moves. Intermediate moves, it's like capturing another piece, um, it's like giving a counter check, or it's creating a counter threat. And here you can still insert this move rook d8. Very smart move, exploiting the fact that this king is on, uh, on d1. And it turns out the king doesn't have a good square to go to. The trick is, king e2 looks by far the, the safest option. However, now we check if we take the bishop, white takes the bishop, everything looks nice, but there's the problem bishop a6 check. And the problem is the king doesn't have a good square to go to, has been caught in the middle of the board by the bishop and the rook, it's going to be made on the next move after rook c4, bishop takes c4, is checkmate. So that's a good line. Um, 
that is the problem after b takes c6. The king on e2 is not well placed. Bishop is coming to a6. So after b takes c6, uh, white couldn't take the bishop on c5. Instead, he played a move like bishop d2. Bishop a6 was played, king e1, and just something like, like rook d5. I think this was the game. In any case, um, you're just a piece up here, and that's uh, what can happen with, with intermediate moves. Still, let's conclude the, the remaining lines, because um, you don't have to go to e2, but other moves have their own problems as well. For example, if you go to c2, you're no longer attacking the bishop on c5, and you can simply take on c6. This is a problem. If you go with the bishop to d2, well, then f2 is hanging. So that doesn't help either. And, well, if you go knight to d2, this looks still the, the most tricky move, uh, because it looks as if you're still guarding the, the pawn on f2. But here the problem is that Again, we have an intermediate move. There's not a check, there's not a counter capture, uh, but you can actually um, just move the bishop, and b4 is the, the right square to go to. Bishop on c6 is hanging. White needs to move his bishop, not to lose on the spot. you got to go bishop f3, let's say attacking the knight, and here black has a choice, either to take first on f2 with a knight, deflecting the bishop from e1 and then take on d2, but perhaps... Bishop takes d2 is the uh, the easiest move. Attacking the rook on um, on c1, you gotta take on d2. But then there's knight takes f2, and on the next move, I'm going to take on h1. Black wins the exchange in all the lines. After bishop takes c6 from the start, uh, black is going to win material. It's a fantastic battle of intermediate moves. Intermediate moves are brilliant. But you got to be alert, because don't be too enthusiastic when you found, find an intermediate move. Look at the opponent, opponent's possibilities as well, because very often uh, in reply uh, there is a good counter, uh, counter by means of an uh, intermediate move as well. Tricky stuff, a lot of calculation. Look at forcing moves, captures, checks, counter threats. That helps you um, when you're... Uh, trying to make use of the intermediate move.